Welcome to the escarpment. This is all about my model railway build and I'm your host Jason. In just a moment I'm going to go around and play catch up on what's been happening over the last six months on this layout. This is a bit of a piggyback to the last video just due to the fact that I had so much to sort of talk about and I sort of ran out of time on the last video. Now I'll come back at the end of the video and sort of talk about why I ran out of time and what that's got to do with this channel. You get the thumbs down. It's okay, it's, a, it's just the same format we're going to do, like the last video. You can't use them in the same format. They'll be fine. Oh, oh shut up. Down. Let's go and have a bit of a look at what's been happening. So first up, let's start with uh, terraforming. So I've started to do some bits and pieces here on level two. In the past or on my past layouts, I've used the weaving cardboard and then used the plaster cloth over the top to sort of get that hard shell. I find that really messy and I've decided not this time around. What I'm gonna do is just going back to the basics of paper macheing basically. First up, what I do is use this mesh material, which I just go to Bunnings, it's the stuff you find on your, your fly screens and your door screens, etc. And I just use a staple gun to sort of get that in place. I don't really worry about how it looks or how it's formed. It's all free flowing, as you can sort of see down here. And then next up, I cut a bunch of newspaper strips, paint one side of it with PVA glue, because obviously I'm not going to use paper mache material. Uh, it's organic and it will end up going mouldy, etc. I sort of give it a coat of PVA and put a strip on straight on top of the mesh. And then basically come back and paint another layer of PVA over the top. And then go on with the next layer. I think I've got two layers on that. I may do a third. At the end of the process is I've got this smooth coat. And it's used for your internal dry walls and it's really smooth and it's great because all I do is just grab a paintbrush and then paint this on as you can see here and it gives a really really hard coat so that's basically what I'm going to be doing for the terraforming on the front face now another thing that I've done is I've put in my LED infrastructure you can see I've got it all in place Pretty much I've got level one done, although I do need to come back and do just under the second helix. And it goes all the way over there. And then basically I've got my LED strips and then what I'm going to do is get some 3M double-sided tape just to help with getting a better stick. I know the, the LED lighting does come with its own sticky, but I'm just, I'm not confident that it's a good grade. It will end up falling off once it gets a bit of heat from having them on all the time. So another thing down here on level one is I'm going to do some enhancements to the track. You see, when I was originally designing the track work, level one is predominantly all about the steel works. I had the coal trains come in, but they were going straight over to the coal yard and weren't really dumping their coal anywhere. So I'm gonna come back and sort of work in this area around here and see if I can do something to enable the trains to basically come off the main line. I'm gonna put in a new curved set of points there the blue tape is where that line is going to continue and join up with this one. So obviously I will cut this off, rejoin it, and then basically it'll come around. And on the other side there, there's going to be a few sets of points where it's going to then come off for this third inner track. And this is where I'm going to have a, the coal dumpers somewhere around. And then basically over there as well, it'll be able to get back onto the main line and over here and on the upline of the mains. Another thing I'm doing in this area is I'm ripping out that single slip over there, putting in just a standard set of points. Along this track here, I'm gonna put in another passenger station. It's gonna be a terminus. Once I finish level three, I am gonna come back and try to put in that single loop in here so I can have a continuous run while I'm working on the track down here. 
Now in the last video I talked about this train speed one. I can now report that I've actually got it fully installed. I've got, where are we, down there, I've got the sensors in place and they're appropriately spaced as it approaches, as it hits the first sensor you'll see it go out and that just means I've triggered it and it's timing and then once it runs over that second sensor it'll reappear and give you the kilometers per hour. Now I just thought I'd take you around the top level. I've done quite a bit of work up here on level three. Originally for those that do remember this layout I had a set of points here uh, and that would go off to the branch line. But what I've done is actually extended that line to come all the way around and then meet the main line down here. So as we move down, this is basically where the junction is off to the coal loader. You probably would have heard me talk many times now. Hopefully with the amount of work that I've got done, there's a bit more of a visual here to get a bit of an idea. So this track here is the coal branch and it goes off to the loader up here on level three. These two in the middle are your main lines and then they'll go down through a tunnel portal down there and sort of be hidden. And you can sort of see the track over here while this front face will be a little open so I can get access. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, there's no scenery to it. It's just the main line hidden. So you get the impression that trains are going off somewhere and then coming back. That far track over there is the return loop on the coal line. And it will come back and meet up with the main line down here. So we started to get the board. It was cut in three bits and started to uh, have different heights you can see there. I actually have printed that off using my 3D printer and I had to fully design it and then print it out. So basically there, that was all designed in the CAD and then printed on my 3D resin printer. I'm very happy how that come up. This is, by the way, only a prototype because I didn't really support it too well. I just wanted to get a bit of a print and see how it was. I've sort of splashed some paint on there and some weathering just to make it come to life a little bit more. This is the main line, which is where the main train, passenger trains, etc. Maybe some freight trains will disappear. And then you can see it declines back down onto the baseboard and basically it will go all the way around this level three on the bottom line there hidden and it'll be on the now on the down line and just give the impression that it's going somewhere and coming back so as far as the coal line goes it starts the incline you can see there i've started to do the super elevation on the roadbed so far i've got this infrastructure in place and i've got it going all the way over there now that big platform over there, that's where the coal loader will be. And then obviously it will come back and then meet up with that back infrastructure there. I just wanted to turn my attention to this convex mirror that I've installed. Now basically up here, I'm gonna have another backdrop just behind the coal line. So what's that gonna do is all that three tracks right at the back there are gonna be hidden. So I wanted some cheap insurance so I can just keep an eye on the trains behind there just to make sure you know they haven't stopped or broken down or derailed or anything like that. Now, a lot of people have been talking about installing cameras, but um, to me, you know, I, I think one of these mirrors should do the trick. So we'll see how that goes before I actually install in any expensive camera gear. Now, I wanna turn my attention also to this sound absorbing material that I've actually laid across the walls at the back of the train shed. Now, basically it's one of those areas that everyone doesn't really think about, but given that a lot of my locos on the layout will have sound, you know, it's probably gonna be quite noisy in here at times. So I thought 
putting this sound absorption material on the wards is just going to help take out a lot of that ambient type sounds that's going to be bouncing around. And I guess another thing about it is you're in a space where no one can hear you scream. I can't believe you did that. Can you just take that crap out post editing? I don't want your family in the video. Yeah, fuck you. So some other things in the background that I've been working on is basically, I've got my station signs. This was designed and then printed on the resin printer. I've also got my New South Wales GR buffers. I've also started to work on my station sidings. It's not showing too well, but uh, this might be a better one to sort of show once it's painted. And that's the brickwork, but obviously I've got all these other intricate brickwork patterns there. Anyway, that will come up a lot better once painted. You can't really see because of the gray. So there you go. That's what's sort of been happening. That's what I'm up to present day. Now, just getting back to why I ran out of time, what's that got to do with this channel? You see, I'm gonna keep my videos to 15 minutes or under. I'm not gonna go above that. And the reason is, look, a lot of people are time poor. So I guess that's another boundary that I've set myself for this new channel. There's not gonna be any more waffle and crap like that. Oh, you're full of shit. Shut up. Up on level three, I, I've still got to put the track in. I've still got some sub road bed to do. Now, hopefully this week, as mentioned, I'll, I'll get those joiners. Uh, I'm not so much worried about the track because I've still got a box over there. I've still got fascia to put up. I've got the, the floating helix over here to finish off. And I've still got my storage cabinet that I need to finish off. I'm also at some point gonna need to put my control panels in. I've sort of left them alone up until this point and I think I need to start installing those just to make things easier because I'm to be honest with you I'm tired of going around with a nine volt battery and and switching my points but anyway look we'll see what happens and what will be on the next video will be on the next video but until then bye for now it's been happening no <sighs> uh, da, 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 da. and talk about why Really? Shut up. Got to... It's, and what have we got? Uh, don't get this speaking to a camera crap. Ah, uh, fuck, 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 fuck.